Today we're going to learn how we can solve simple equations. Our keywords are equation, inverse operation. Key idea. We're going to use the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. The addition property of equality says that adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. For example, if you have 2 plus 3 on one side and 2 plus 3 on the other, if we add a 10 on the left and we add a 10 on the right, we are going to have the same number on each side or we're going to have an equivalent equation. For example, 10 plus 2 plus 3 equals 15. 2 plus 3 plus 10 equals 15. So as long as you add the same amount to each side, your equation is going to be balanced. Now, the subtraction property of equality says that subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Let's look at the same example, but now we're going to subtract. If we subtract 2 from both sides, we should have an equivalent equation. Negative 2 plus 2, they cancel each other, and the answer is 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5, 5 minus 2 equals 3. And again, we still have an equation that is balanced. Let's look at these four examples. A. X minus 7 equals negative 6 the first thing we have to do is to identify the variable. Where is our variable? Right here. What's happening? What operation is happening right now? Well, if you have x minus 7, it's a subtraction. So we are going to perform the opposite or inverse operation, which would be addition. Since I'm subtracting 7, I am going to add 7 to both sides. then I'm going to combine like terms. 7 minus 7 is 0, so it goes away. And negative 7 plus 6, different signs find the difference. If you subtract equals 1, and the answer is positive. So this is my answer, x equals 1. How can I check my answer? Simple. I am going to copy the same problem again. And then I'm going to substitute my answer into my variable. If x equals 1, I am going to write a 1. I forgot the negative 6. I'm going to write a 1 where the x goes and then I'm going to combine to see if I'm right. The 1 is positive, so different signs we have to subtract. 1 minus 7 equals negative 6 and since I have the same number on both sides that means that I solved my equation correctly. Let's look at letter B. y plus 3.4 equals 0 0.5. Let's identify our variable. Our variable is right here. What's happening now? We're adding 3.4 to that variable so we're going to perform the inverse operation. We're going to subtract 3.4 from both sides. Minus 3.4 on one side, minus 3.4 on the other side. Now I'm going to combine like terms. 3.4 minus 3.4, it goes away because it equals zero. And then I'm going to subtract the other two numbers. To subtract, remember, 
you need to write the, big, the greater number on top. 4 minus 5. You can't do it, so you have to borrow 1 from the 3. It becomes 14. 14 minus 5 equals 9. And then 3 becomes a 2, and 2 minus 0 is 2. And the answer will be negative. You can again check your answer just by writing the equation again and substituting the variable for its value. y equals negative 2.9 and then I combine like terms. 3.4 minus 2.9 let's check so we can subtract 4 minus 9 so we borrow from the 3 this becomes 14 14 minus 9 equals 5 and 2 minus 2 equals 0 and we got the same answer on both sides All right, next one. Remember to circle or put a box around the answer. The next one, it looks kind of different. This number is called pi, and it's a very special number, a very important for mathematicians. So it is a number, it is not a variable. So we need to identify the variable again, and our variable is h. What's happening here? We're adding 2 pi to h, so we're going to perform the inverse operation which is subtraction. We're going to subtract 2 pi from both sides. Okay, now we combine like terms. 2 pi minus 2 pi equals 0, so it goes away. And 3 pi minus 2 pi is just 1 pi. And this is the answer. I am not going to keep checking. You're more than welcome to do it yourself. If you have any questions, you can ask during class. Questions? You now, what about multiplication and division? It's simple. The multiplication property of equality says that if you multiply each side of the equation by the same number, it produces an equivalent equation. If you have 2 and 2, and you multiply both sides by 3, what are you going to get? You're going to get 6 equals 6. That means you're not changing the equality, your equation is still balanced. Same thing happens with division, the division property of equality. It says the same as a multiplication one, but with division. So basically what you need to know is that if you, as long as you divide both sides of the equations by the same number, your equation will, sti will still be balanced. A divided by 2 equals 4. A divided by 2 equals 4. And you still have an equation that's balanced. Let's look at some examples. A went away, so I'm going to create A. So I am going to identify my variable, just like before. What's happening to my variable? When you see a number next to a variable, that means that that number is multiplying. So the inverse operation of multiplication is division. I am going to write a division line under both sides of the equation, and I'm going to divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is x. And then negative a divided by 2 equals negative 4. If I want to check my answer, I do the same thing as I did before. I am going to write my original equation and I'm going to substitute the variable with its value. I'm going to put parentheses, which means multiplication, and I am going to write the value of x. Then I have to multiply. 2 times negative 4 equals negative 8, which is the same as negative 8, so my answer is correct. Letter B. If you see letter B, you can identify the variable. Remember that pi 
it's a special number it is not a variable so my variable in this case is x now pi is multiplying x so I am going to divide both sides of the equation by pi pi divided by pi equals 1 1 times x is x pi divided by pi equals 1 so I have a 3 left on the right side and that's my answer how do I check? I'm going to write my equation the way it was at the beginning and I'm going to write my multiplication and my 3 inside of my parentheses and if I multiply 3 times pi it's just 3 pi and my answer was correct last but not least there are two ways of looking at this problem we have a fraction we can either multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction or simply think about it as two separate numbers this is the first way when you have a fraction you can multiply the fraction by its reciprocal you meaning that you have to flip the fraction but you leave the same sign that it has and you're going to do the same thing on the other side be careful this is not subtraction remember there's nothing between the number and the other number or the number in the parentheses so that's multiplication so on this side 4 divided by 4 is 1 3 divided by 3 is 1 a negative times a negative equals a positive and all I have is n on the other side 2 times 4 equals 8 1 times 3 equals 3 a negative times a negative is a positive and then I have an improper fraction which I can simply divide 3 goes twice into 8 and I can just say that my answer is 2 and 2 thirds if this is not how you want to see it then what we can do is think about it in a different way 3 is multiplying so I am going to divide the other side by 3 4 is dividing so I am going to multiply and then I have to bring with me the negative so it's exactly the same as we did before it's just a different way of seeing it and at the end my, my answer is going to be still two and two thirds